Hi everyone, welcome back to my Python training. In this lesson we're going to look at classes in Python. And classes are ways to create objects. They're blueprints or templates to create new objects. And everything in Python is an object. A list is an object, a dictionary is an object. So a class allows us to create those objects and create instances of those objects. So what it, that in essence does is allows us to save the functionality and the data together. So this is a new model of programming. It's not new, but it's new to us, where we use where we work on objects, object-oriented programming as opposed to procedural program, which we've done so far. So the hardest part of, of classes are not to understand them, but to figure out when to use them and why to use them. So we're going to start with the basics and then we'll move on up to inheritance and other complicated aspects of classes. Uh, but again, the best way to do it is to do it. So um, let's get started. So we'll start off by creating a class for a user in a user database, an employee database. That's the easiest example. Um, so to create a class is very simple. We'll call the class employee. And now that we've created the, the employee class, we want to give it some attributes. So the first thing we're going to have to create is the init um, <clears throat> function. And that is the format for that is def. And it's two underscores init and the uh, it's a function like we've done in functions before it takes self so this is a copy of the class itself so it's basically initializing itself um, we need to give it some other <coughs> parameters as well so we'll give it a first name last name um, department So we're going to use self in front of these variables and again this says that these variables are from the object from the class itself um, so what we're saying is that the variables as part of this are going to be equal to the variables that we send to the class so now we've created the initialization function so every time there's an instance of this class created these attributes are created example of how we would initialize that We'll come back to our program and we will make an instance of the class. So we get the class and we make a copy of it. But the copy will contain these attributes. So how we would do that is we call it employee uh, one equal to and we give it the parameters that go into this class. So, we, so now we're going to create an instance of this class we're going to put these name the first name and the last name and the department and we call that and uh, now if we go to employee one um, last name we should get the last name of the employee and we do think of this as an instant of a user object that's created from this class so the class is a is a blueprint or a template and when we uh, create an instance of the class but in this format we put we create a copy of the class we create a copy of the of the user uh, data set and we bring in we give it a name and, and we fill in these key fields which would need to be filled in in any uh, employee database and, and much much more so the next thing we're going to do is create a function on this class so that we can um, a typical function that would be used in a real world on this class and that function, it's called, actually called a method when it's in a class, but it's, it's the same as a function that we've, we've used already. But it's just called a method because it's part of a class. We'll create a function here to do something with this data, and then we'll call that. So we'll have to give it the um, <coughs> self, because again, we're running this query on the instance of the class. And we'll print. So now when we call this query, on that class it'll print instead of having to type to print in manually so if we call this we should get a print out of the, the user and we did and um, we need to clean it up a little bit but there you go so now you see how the object is created so the employee uh, the <coughs> EMP1 employee1 is the object and it contains the attributes that's needed for an employee and it also contains this query that can be run on the employee 
um, to print out the name. So this is an example of how the object and the functionality and the data are contained within the object. So let's try another example um, with a dog or with a um, pet and we'll see that's another common example and we'll see how that uh, shows for an uh, object. So now we're going to create a class for our pet and class and again we'll create the initialization function and we'll give it a um, type and name. So now we have a pet that has two attributes, the type of the pet, dog or cat, or, um, and the pet's name. So we'll create another function. So now if we kind of call an instance of the pet, we would say pet1 equal to pet. So when we run this, it all should work. And when we want to uh, print out the pet type, we would call the pet1 pet name. So before this would work, I had to go back and clean up something. I had to put type in front of ourself in front of the type and name. And I also had to remove the parameters from the, um, the function pet name. Um, as it didn't need it because we're just printing the uh, instance. And there you have it. My pet is a frog and its name is Kermit. Now we can create another instance of it. Do we have our template set up? So pet2. So now we can call the second pet. <coughs> pet2. And pet name. So now we should get both pet names um, and both types. So as you can see, it works and this is the power of object programming because we can do this as many times as we need to do it. There are no limitations on creating instances. And as you can see, the data um, and the functions in a normal object, the functions would be more complicated obviously than this, but you can see how the data is self-contained in these instances that are called based on the template, based on the class um, here. That covers the basics for Python classes. Uh, in the next videos, we'll look at inheritance and other areas of classes that are a little more complicated. I'll put the code for this video on my website at pythonforadultsandkids.com. Uh, if you like this, uh, find these tutorials useful, please don't forget to like them, share them, and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.